All right, happening right now in Cuba, and this is uh, uh, this. I, my my anger is through the roof as uh, as any human beings with any sense of humanity should be as well. I'm going to read you this. I have uh, clients around here. <clears throat> uh, the woman is from Cuba, and uh, like most Cubans, she realizes how far left the Democrat and the flirtation with communism and Marxism and is absolutely abhorred by that. And so was hugely in favor of Trump because she realizes Trump was was the only thing set stopping the, the Marxist takeover of the country, which is happening as we sit here anyway. Anyway, so she shares me this with a video, which I'll share with you here in just a second. And uh, it just infuriates me, man. It's not as if we didn't know commies were bad, but somehow we, because we don't longer have the, uh, the whites and the Russian communism, we can't criticize brown communism because, you know, the Catholic church, the brown, they gotta be, because we know, we got a freaking Marxist Pope. We got freaking Marxists all over the place. But if they got brown skin, we can't, we can't, uh, we criticize them. And freaking Pope Francis, he's not even brown. He's Argentine. Was he from Argentina? I mean, half these people are from freaking Germany anyway, because they fled, they, they fled when the Nazis fell. Freaking, I, this whole Marxist theology, the Antifas, the ideology of critical race theory, the liberation theology by the freaking Jesuit Catholic Church, all this has led to what I'm going to show you in here in just a second. But check this out. My wife is a Cuban immigrant. We live in locally. She asked me to send this to you because we watch your videos and we know you have a large following. The Cuban government is going after individuals in Cuba who are fighting for their freedom. Oh, but because of COVID, says freaking sniffy Joe Biden, you POS. Right, look, this gets my channel taken. I don't care. You got to fight for freedom. Some people got to make a stand for freedom, man. In the video I'm sending, the husband is dragged out of the house in front of his wife and kids and then shot to death. And it's you'll see it. They don't even leave the body for the family to bury. Anything you can do to get the word about these atrocities and help the Cubans in their struggle for basic human freedoms will be uh, much appreciated. Then I text him back and said, can I, can I uh, mention this in a video? He goes, please do. And uh, I'm going to interview this lady later on tonight, I'm hoping, um, the woman who sent me this. And she still has family there. So let's just watch it. It's going to freaking infuriate you. And I don't know what she, this woman is. I just hear Mira. I know that means look, look. Look at that. She had blood? Friggin' scumbags, man. Oh, but the government, they provide health care. I'll never forget, I sit, I'll never, freaking, I just cannot tell you how evil this is and the people who, I just, it's insane. I'll never forget, I was sitting at a, I was managing my bar back in Arlington, Virginia, and they had this guy, it just, he can't, I just never forget, he's like, well, arguing in favor of Castro. This is in, in the early, is around the time with Elian Gonzalez and stuff. I'm sitting there thinking, dude, what the hell? He goes, well, they provide free health care and they're illiterate. I, I, I sat there, I said, this is insanity, insanity. 
You would give up everything to be literate, which he is anyway in the United States, and for free health care? You think you're getting health care? I just, I could not believe it. And then I realized it's the devil. The devil. These people are so angry about something and they want revenge. They don't want to help broad society. In fact, hold on just a second. My wife's dad's collection, when he, uh, when his, her mom died, we went up the attic and uh, he was a Russian interpreter, spoke, he was a uh, Chinese Mandarin uh, speaker, as well as a professor. My wife's mom spoke Mandarin, uh, Mandarin Chinese. Anyway, so he just had this treasure trove of stuff and he uh, translated on behalf of the DOD. Um, I just, I, I wish I would have met him. I didn't, but he's just got this treasure trove of stuff from the, uh, the commies. And, and this is eyewitness selections from Russian memoirs. And this is from, I think, 1971, but I want to read you, hold on just a second. The book is in Russian and English. They have English translation, thank goodness. But I want to read you real a brief about Alex. Now remember, because Russians are white, uh, it's easy to be against the Russians, but if they're Marxists and commies are brown, uh, uh, we don't want to say anything because we don't want to colonize. They're, they are being colonized by Marxist ideology, which is communism. Freaking idiots. Wake the hell up and recognize what the hell is going on for the evil it is. This is satanic. Anyway, I want to read you about Alexander, Alexander Gorbachev, not Gorbachev, Gorbachev. He's one of 10 children of a peasant family. And this is where the, the foundation of communism says, oh, now check this out. Because it's, it's, if you live in America and you think communism is the alternative that you need to go for, you're a friggin' idiot, man. Because the reason that communism was the alternative back in the 1800s leading into the 1917 revolution, because the czar was such a scumbag himself as all the freaking the fiefdoms and all that stuff that they had in, in Western Europe and whatnot pre, you know, back in the 1800s. But anyway, so I, I, Frank, I don't blame them. I blame them for what they knew happened later and how they still stuck too true to the cause. And I blame the idiots, as we talk about Paul Hollander's book, Political Pilgrims, Paul Robeson, George and R. Shaw, all these people who saw with their own eyes what was going on and they did nothing about it. They said nothing about it because for some reason being on the left, I don't know what it is. Notwithstanding the industry of his father, there was sometimes not enough to eat. White privilege. Uh, bread, the staple of Russian peasant diet, often ran out by New Year's, New Year's when the grain stored fell from the fall harvest was exhausted. There were quarrels among the children about their portions. So you can see, he's like, what the hell? But anyway, long story short, he sees he's, uh, uh, he, he sees he, he has no, nothing. He, he sees these rich people. He's like, this ain't right. All right, so he goes on to... Uh, all right, hold on a second. So he goes, let me just read a little bit more. The Gorbatovs, however, were more fortunate than many families. They had a plot of land, a cow, and a plow horse. One of uh, this kid, uh, Alexander's first memories concerns the death of their horse just before plowing. The carcass was carefully skinned so that the hide could be sold for three or four rubles. After the fall harvest, it was custom and a necessity for the men in the village to go look for work in the larger villages and towns in order to make enough money to tie their families over to the next harvest. The senior Gorbatov trader was processing sheep hides. Each fall, he would leave home and continue his journey until he found work. Then he would write for Alexander uh, and his brother to join him. If luck were with him, they could earn 20 or 30 rubles before returning home at Easter to start plowing. There were few village schools, and although the nearest one was some distance away, Alexander attended it for the full three-year program. At 11, he was put to work, first with his father, then as an apprentice and a shoemaker, where he received room and board but no money for several years. He remained until his 21st year when he's called up for military service. His older brother had to flee to Siberia to avoid arrest for political agitation. The brother later drafted was shot for spreading anti-war propaganda uh, in the early months of the First World War before the commies took over. All right. Drafted in the cavalry in 1912, Alexander, the young soldier, was still in the army at the start of the First World War, a war in which 2.3 million Russian men died as soldiers because of the idiocy, idiocy of the First World War. The Bolshevik propaganda slogan, bread, peace, and land, could not have been more effectively designed to rally the people to his cause. So he fell hook, line, and sinker for bread, peace, and land. All right. All right, so the Red Army was created to secure the young Soviet regime against the international interventionist forces of the English, French, and Americans, as well as those white anti-commies. All right, uh, so, so he, be, 
he uh, Gorbachev made a moral commitment that was never to waver even the darkest periods of his life for the Red Army and the communism. As a Red Army officer, he fought for three years defeating the whites and then the Poles who had seized upon Russia's precarious position to launch an attack on their eastern neighbor. When peace finally came, he assumed the party would probably muster him out of the army and replace him with a man of a higher educational attainment. Instead, the young cavalry commander was asked, uh, was ordered to stay in the service and get further training. He lived an uneventful life. All right. Then one morning in the spring of 1937, he opened the newspaper and learned that the NKVD, the, the KGB, had unmasked a fascist plot in the higher ranks of the army. Uh, the member of the general staff had been arrested and shot. It was the beginning of the purge of the Red Army. In October 1937, Gorbachev's turn came. One morning, he went to the quartermaster's office to pick up uh, his winter uniform. The supply officer had just received a telegram from Moscow ordering him not to issue Gorbachev a new uniform. The general went to Moscow to clarify the situation. And at 2 a.m., the old knock at the late in the early morning, there was an early morning knock at his hotel door. In answer to his question, a woman's voice replied, uh, answer his question, who is it? A woman's voice replied, a telegram. Gorbachev opened the door and three armed men walked in. One ripped the medals off his tunic and the other his insignia. In the first of his many prison cells, he found seven men, all of whom seemingly loyal Soviet citizens and officials. Some were members of the party. Gorbachev shared one thing with the hundreds of people he met in the following years. He was innocent of any crime against the Soviet state and had, in fact, devoted his life to it. Uh, he differed from his fellow prisoners in one respect. He did not break down under torture and sign a false confession. Nevertheless, after a four-minute trial, he was sentenced to 15 years in a labor, labor camp in northeast Siberia. He barely nearly died in camp. In 1940, thanks to efforts of his wife, his case was reopened, and then he was finally released. The former enemy of the people went on to become one of the major Soviet heroes in World War II. He was present at the famous meeting of the Russian and American Armed Forces uh, on the Elbe and subsequently became the Soviet command Commandant of Berlin. In the post years, he was elected to the Soviet Parliament and later a position in the Politburo. Uh, he never wavered, never wavered from the commies. Can you freaking believe that, man? So even uh, so, although no, by no means uh, he had a memoir uh, and by no means the first exposés of the Stalinist purges and prison camps, um, uh, much of the work okay, to, okay, well, anyway, he, uh, oh, yeah, it's right here. Uh, two qu quantities emerged from his memoirs, his essential humaneness as a person is absolute total commitment to the communist ideals, notwithstanding the imperfections. All right. So you can, I can, that guy, whatever, man, it's, he's an idiot, but I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Cause he saw the difference. If you're in America, and you think this is the way to go with these commies? You're a freaking fool. Get off my channel. I don't want nothing to do with you. Anyone promoting communism will be banned. I'm just telling you right now, communism is evil. It's satanic. That doesn't mean capitalism is pure. It means capitalism is better. And you're seeing it right with your very eyes. Now, with that said, do not sit there and say, what about America? Dude, I got freaking tons of agreement with you there. Stop that crap. First thing we got to do is got to beat the left. Once we beat the left, we can focus on the in, what was the insanity that's happening here. Let's beat the left first, okay? All right, so I'm going to try to interview this lady tonight. Cannot wait. Um, and uh, just freaking pray for these people, man. Pray, dear, oh, man. Heavenly Father, we pray for the Cuban people. Oh, my goodness. So many years and decades of just suppression, oppression, violence, murder, prison camps. It just... Heavenly Father, we pray to give them strength. Whatever your command is, we will fall. But please, Lord, just give them the strength and the courage to promote your good word, to promote your good word. And secondly, please, good Lord, probably most importantly, let us recognize how good we have it in the United States. To preach your word without, as we sit here today, without the fear, the fear of reprisals. Those days are coming, though, and may we stay strong, knowing that Jesus loves us, died for us, and forgives us our sins as long as we ask for forgiveness and believe in him. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for the uh, people of Cuba. Thank you.